What is a KPI or key performance indicator in construction? In this video, we're gonna talk about the KPIs that you should have on your project and which ones really, really matter. So you're gonna learn which ones are valuable and which ones really don't that much and how you can have good metrics for your project. Just like if you are a human being, a key indicator is your pulse. What is the pulse for your project? Stay with us to find out. All right, let's roll. So a key performance indicator in construction is designed to measure uh, certain metrics. And I do, I've talked to you about this before, but there are leading indicators, which will indicate whether you're doing preventative actions. And then there's lagging indicators that will indicate whether or not you did something properly, but that's lagging, that's after the fact. I care more about leading indicators than I do about lagging indicators, although everybody needs lagging indicators to basically assess like, how uh, well the, the uh, company or the department or the operations of the project is going, right? But I do want to prevent the problems with leading indicators. So I'll start out with that. Typical leading indicators in construction are cost performance, schedule performance, quality performance, safety metrics, productivity and efficiency numbers, customer satisfaction metrics, and others that deal with things like sustainability and others. So there are typical KPIs that are measured on a construction project uh, that are pretty common with the industry. Let me tell you about a couple that are just absolutely worthless. Like, yeah, let's go to CPM first and foremost. You, you all know how I feel about uh, the critical path method, that it is not an effective system in construction. So there will be certain KPIs that track numbers around uh, slippage, uh, float trends, the critical path, uh, the uh, float on a project. All of these are completely worthless, right? So like these typical uh, numbers that are used in conventional project management, there are a lot of them that really, really, really just don't matter. The other thing that I would say is that if you're only managing budgets versus investments, you could get yourself into trouble. Here's what I mean. When project managers or owners reps or anybody for that matter starts to manage a project by reduction, by cutting, by saving, by reducing expenses and not paying for needed things, you're in for trouble. Now, reducing ex uh, you know, non-necessary expenditures is a really good thing, but when that's your only mode for trying to manage a project, then you've lost track of what I call investment. And investment is, hey, are, are there parts of this project budget that invest in the workers, that invest in the conditions of the site, that invest in the team, that invest in the environment, that invest in training? That You know what I'm saying? Like, so let's say for instance, you are on a project and just as a representative example, uh, the overall budget does not enable a good uh, pre-construction effort, right? That statistically and historically will tank your project, right? So you're like, hey, we can just cut out eight months of pre-construction with the general contractor and design assist trade partners. Oh my gosh, we just saved $800,000. Yeah, but statistically and historically, that is what tanks a project. So you're going to spend millions. You saved 800 grand, but you're going to spend millions of dollars in overruns and in problems and in extensions and in budget increases and in large risks, which weren't found and Re removed in the pre-construction process. So it's a very myopic view to just track your budget and to manage it by reduction. You have to also consider the investments that are required to actually make you money on the project and to have it go well. So that's just an overview of some, like a taste or a feel of some things that we are not concerned about, things that are meaningless. So let's talk about KPIs or indicators that will really predict project success. You know, and one thing that we track is number of subscribers on the YouTube channel. We know, you know, hey, if there's an uptick in subscribers, oh my gosh, they love this content. We'll keep the same kind of titles, topics, content, approach. So please, please, please uh, like and subscribe to these videos because we track those KPIs to make sure we're delivering for you because we don't earn any money off these. This is all for you. We actually pay money. So we really want to invite you to like and subscribe. Okay, so you are probably really excited to talk about the KPIs that make a difference. Let's talk about those right now. Number one, quality. But I'm going to talk about the very specific things you can track when it comes to quality that make a difference. And this is not exhaustive. This is not all inclusive. This is just the bare minimum. Okay, so number one, your point of release. What this means is that when you have your schedule, 
each of the activities that need a quality pre-construction meeting, which are pretty much all of them, but especially your high risk ones, will have to have a, not only a pull plan way out ahead, but a quality pre-construction meeting, okay? And the process from going from pre-mobilization to pre-construction to your initial inspection to your follow-up inspections to final inspection and close out of any change orders and any uh, remittance of payment, right? That process there must be tracked as uh, steps in a process. So when you have a trade partner coming on site, they come into the queue. What's the first thing? Pre-mobilization. What's the next thing? Let's go ahead and run them through the submittals. What's the third thing? Pull plan. What's the fourth thing? Pre-con meeting. There's a list and managing the point of release when that trade can go from step to step to step to step and how well they're progressing through that in a visual chart is one of the most important things you can do in addition to seeing it in the schedule because it will trigger you to follow the quality process. Number two, with quality is number of pre-construction meetings held that were properly executed that ended up with a checklist or visual quality board as an outcome. So that means of all of the scopes that were identified that needed a pre-construction meeting, are we on track with executing them and implementing with a quality checklist? Number three, the other key indicator, which might seem a little bit silly, uh, but it's very, very real, is the percentage of crews installing according to a checklist or those visual feature of work boards according to the owner's expectations on your site. Now you can track the number of instances of rework, the amount of money spent, uh, the amount of days that were delayed because of quality, those are all lagging indicators. I want the leading indicators, which I've just mentioned. So that's for quality. Number two, schedule. Here are some KPIs you can track around schedule. The first one, especially if you're using the proper master scheduling system, which is a TAC plan, is your remaining buffer ratio. So you should have a buffer in your norm level, right? Your macro is on the five day. Your norm is on a different tack time and has buffers. You should have the amount of buffers that you had at the beginning of the project. You should track the ratio of how many of those buffers have been used according to how many should have been used up to this point. And if you're less than one in that ratio, you know that you're running out of buffers and it's a great KPI to track. The second one in, in schedule is your roadblock removal average. This is as you identify roadblocks, when you found them, when you removed them, the amount of days before they would have impacted your work on average, so you take all of your roadblocks on your log as an aggregate, it shouldn't be zero, one, two, three, four, five. That means you're removing them just out ahead. You really want a roadblock removal average between five and 15 days beforehand, which means that on average, you're removing roadblocks at least five to 15 days before you impact work. Another one which is key, which is a leading indicator, is your successful handoff percentage. That means of all of the wagon handoffs where a trade goes from zone to zone, how many of the handoffs throughout were successful. That's actually more important than percent plan complete because it signifies flow. And then the last one, percent plan complete, I really do like it. If you're using CPM and last planner, you're going to target above 80. If you're using tact, you're gonna target 100. But this is the percent of activities that were promised or committed to that were actually completed on time per the promise, per the commitment. So these are all really good KPIs. The PPC one and the buffer, the remaining buffer ratio are lagging indicators. The handoffs and the roadblock removal average are leading indicators, but these are some really good ones. Yes, you can track other KPIs with your schedule, but these are the ones I would track at a minimum. Number three, financial projections. This is a big one. Um, I can tell you that just like our scheduling systems and construction are broken, our financial reporting systems are broken. You should be able to see uh, the amount of buyout, the buyout remaining, the budget contingency, you should see your labor gains, you should see your gains on uh, insurance, you should see your gains on any equipment rentals, how that all tallies up, uh, how your contingency buckets are doing, and what your gross profit is, right? Every, all of the numbers that add to your gross and net profit should be visible and reported accurately so you can play that monopoly game of how to make money on your project. But here are some minimum KPIs that I would track. Gross profit, contingency, your risks and your opportunities. Now there's a whole lot more 
when it comes to finances. And uh, we will link you in the description below to another video that basically expands on this topic because there's a lot more to it. But the bottom line is the project team should see weekly the financial snapshot and how it's projecting in the future. Number four, with buyout, you're gonna wanna have a really nice buyout log and track whether or not your trades are queued up on time with insurance and all the right permissions and the executed contract when you need them. Number five, material procurement. You'll also want a procurement log that's tracking all long lead or high risk uh, procurement according to the arrival or needed on site date, the percentage of successful procurement items, and you'll want to track any of them that are trending late and how they affect the schedule. And number six, team health. This is a big one. We have a team health assessment. A tracker on a spreadsheet if you want that's absolutely crucial you will also want to track team health the bottom line with all of these is you want to have a pulse for how your project is doing so i've given you a sampling and i also want you to know that when it comes to your buyout log or your procurement log we can give you templates just reach out to me at jason s at elevate construction ist.com and if you want that team health assessment to track that kpi that indicator uh, I would be more than happy to share it with you. In the description below, I'm gonna link you to this KPI dashboard in a beautiful formatted Canva graphic. And I want you to know that if you ever need help, we provide these services. And as owner's reps, we can track this throughout and help you to make sure your project is successful. But at a minimum, I hope you enjoy the content and I hope you've enjoyed this video because tracking the success from a leading indicator standpoint and lagging indicators can help you to take corrective action and really deliver a remarkable project. On we go.